But a big question is how do you personalize this stuff enough for people to kind of absorb it and then think about how they behave differently as well? Because that's really the challenge of sustainability because we all have to learn how to behave quite a bit differently than we behaved in the past. Lila, you wanted to get in there, right? Yeah, I, I have a kind of a controversial thought on this. Um, so I, I live in Silicon Valley as well, and a bunch of my friends are really Facebook people and have come into so much money that it's like, it's hard to fathom. <laughs> They're buying like $10 million mansions at the age of 29, and you know Facebook just bought Instagram for a billion dollars. To put that into context, the entire government of Liberia runs on $400, $400 million a year for four million people. And one company with like 25 employees just got bought for one billion. So part of my challenge as a social entrepreneur is to humanize these others on the other side of the world and to make people with this kind of wealth aware that these are people too. And that a lot of this is a birth lottery. You know, we happen to get lucky. And if you are lucky enough to be born in the US and be able to travel to Silicon Valley and be an entrepreneur, you have access to these kinds of resources, but you could be just as smart and live in a village or a slum and, and just never have a shot, even if you're really bright, right? And so, um, so I think that actually a longer narrative form um, that really hooks people and humanizes people on the other side of the world can often be really effective. And I'll use two examples. Um, one of them you've probably all heard about, Joseph Kony, the video that came out, Invisible Children's video. And, and as somebody who studied development economics in Africa and considers you know, herself a policy wonk, it was hard to watch that video because I thought it simplified a lot of issues and over-dramatized things. However, it got 100 million views. So at some level, even if it dramatically oversimplifies an issue, who cares? I mean, if that had happened in Rwanda in 1994, if, if that same you know, media outreach had occurred, um, there are many people who say that, that the genocide would have been stopped, that we would have, have invested a lot more than we did because we, we cared. And the second example I'll, I'll use is this amazing book called Behind the Beautiful Forevers written by a woman named Catherine Boo, which is a narrative account of a bunch of people who live in a, in a very small slum in, in Mumbai. And it's, it's perhaps the best documentary work I've ever read or seen, in that she went and spent three years there and did flip cam interviews of like 200 people, but then emerged with almost like a novel, um, just this great set of stories of people who live there. And, and what this book does better than any that I've read is it really humanizes people and it makes you think, wow, you know, I could just as easily have been born in this slum and what would have happened to me if I had been born there. And I think that kind of work is what we really need um, to, to get people to care. And, and that's often the first big barrier.